Hey everybody, I'm Adam Birch, and this is my boy, Don Crandall. And we're here with another episode of Half in the Bag. No. <laughs> it's Where in Hell Do We Go From Here? Where in Hell Do We Go From Here? And um, today we're going to be talking about Star Wars mm. um, because there's been some news in the. Uh, in the news <laughs> for Star Wars, and they're having their uh, their Europe, their big conference in Europe. So there's some news coming out of there. Right. And um, but one thing before we started talking about that that I wanted to mention was that coming out of San Diego Comic Con mm. last weekend, uh, Warner Brothers announced that they are going to go ahead with um, a Superman Batman team up. All movie. right. So, obviously, they were listening to this, to our video blog. Yeah. I was wondering if we should, you know, seek legal action. They, I don't know. Did Did they steal our idea? It's certainly possible that they have, Mm -hmm. you know. um, I I kept watching us, and then just a week later, plotting it all out. I know. know, It's a real coincidence. But it's, I think it's good. Uh, Superman, Batman, obviously them thinking Justice League too much to take on probably to introduce all those heroes Superman and Batman right. at least with the Dark Knight and now Man of Steel have been strong tentpole productions for them they know that they can get people in the theater those characters have already had origins told of them mm-hmm. so it's sort of like the gateway into a Justice League right right I, I, I like it obviously that's what I was talking about last time but look, we'll see what happens I'm, I'm thumbs up Right, and hopefully they'll keep listening to this blog, and maybe uh, they'll, you know, the people over at uh, Bad Robot okay. and Disney will be listening to this uh, when we're talking about Star Wars Day. Right. So obviously we all know that there's going to be a new Star Wars trilogy, okay, a sequel trilogy to the original trilogy, as well as several spin-off movies, one shots, you know, chronicling perhaps Boba Fett. Uh, like a uh, solo story. And we also know that there's going to be the uh, animated cartoon series Rebels, right? Rebels, Rebels right. which is sort of now uh, they've killed the defunct Clone Wars cartoon, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, um, sad. When it was starting to get good, I mean, I, I, I definitely thought Clone Wars was kind of a mixed bag. They had several episodes about Jar Jar and the droids that I could have done without. Right. But um, they're going ahead with Rebels. But let's talk, let's talk about the movies, what's going on. Okay. So, I mean, the first thing, obviously, where in the hell do we go from here? With episode seven. With epi- episode seven. Okay. Uh, you know, so we know that there is an entire expanded universe out there that, you know, pretty much picks up right after uh, the destruction of the second Death Star. Return of the Jedi. After Return of the Jedi with the, the tr- books. The Truce at Bakura was the first chronological book. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've pretty much read every single one of those okay. series. There's been a few exceptions. The the Paul Kemp books I haven't read. I haven't read some of the X Wing I don't know. Uh, I, I never kept Raid Squad. So that's good. That. See like I know this whole EU and right. you kind of have dabbled a little bit. You've read I, I, Dark I Empire, the, you read that? I did the EU during the original trilogy, the expanded universe, the mm. books, comics, the Marvel so, comics, certainly all the Marvels, the first few books. I think I after the heir to the Empire, I kind of tuned out. Mm. I don't know, maybe I just matured or something. So here, here, yeah. Know. Well, I mean, or over got oversaturated, and yeah, I think that's that going to be the big concern mm-hmm. with Star Wars is whether mm-hmm. or not um, fans are over it. Okay, you know, we had three movies that were, you know. Arguably um, bad, mediocre to prequels, bad, bad to mediocre. Prequels, the, right. the prequels. I'll, a real quick, I'll, I, I I stand by the prequels a little bit in that they're on their own. They're they're fun, entertaining films. I, I like the prequels, but I should have loved them. You know, like I love the old ones. So in that respect, they're disappointing. But I'm not a prequel hater. You're smoking crack, buddy. Those movies are bad. <laughs> He's a prequel hater. Yeah, no, I'm not a prequel hater. Here's the thing. I'm a little more tolerant. The big ideas that. of the prequels, which are having a tragic heroic arc, uh, Luke Skywalker being sort of the monomyth, 
Hulk. Okay. And, and Lucas doing sort of the same thing with Anakin Skywalker, but more in the vein of like Oedipus Rex, you yeah, know, like a, you know, the a, Oedipus cycle. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's a brilliant idea, putting it in a face span, face space fantasy mm-hmm. uh, realm. I, I think it's a brilliant idea. It was with the original trilogy. Right. I think it was with the prequel trilogy, and you go through the entire heroic cycle, making the you know, expanding what we thought of as the original trilogy, turning it, you're like, oh, wow, this, you know, the character of Darth Vader is tragic, and, oh, the the Stormtroopers are really clones of this Mm -hmm. Mandalorian warrior. That's pretty cool. Right. It was just the abysmal execution Mm -hmm. of awful dialogue, (laughs) uh, terrible ideas, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. in terms of, like, comic relief. I, I mean, really, it was just awful i mean if he had if he had done something where he had you know sort of said this is the big idea these are the big ideas Mm -hmm. and then had people who uh were creatively sort of executing it i think it would have been a a whole lot better i don't think those movies would have been as bad right right. Um, okay well yeah we we could talk but let's move i mean let's move on about the prequels that that we have right (laughs) Uh, people have talked about them exactly so what what the question is what do we want to see from a new series of movies. Right. I mean, do you have any thoughts uh, about where the hell where the hell do we go from here? For yeah, if, the so you're JJ Abrams and Mike and Michael Arndt and you get to you get to design the new trilogy. Oh, wow. What do you okay. do? What would I do? Mm-hmm. Um, well the the hot topic is should they should they uh, include or acknowledge or pick pieces of the expanded universe the books and comics and Mm. games and so forth and my answer is no no i want to see something completely different Mm. um uh to quote in the commentary track for one of the star trek movies ronald d moore one of the writers and and brandon braga the other writer were saying that their toughest problem in coming up with new star trek stories was all the continuity they had to adhere to and and they thought they should just reboot it. So in a way, yeah, reboot the EU and um, just start mm. uh, start a new. Uh, it's a it's a real hindrance. I'm sure right. it is. Well, and yeah. and here I'm going to agree with you, Don. Okay. Um, and here and and ironically, I, I'm ironically agreeing with you only because when we discussed Clone Wars so much when that show was out, yeah. um, I was the one saying. Man, I wasted all this money on these mm-hmm. comics right. in between episodes two and three, right. only to have them crap on mm-hmm. crap on it <laughs> by by doing their own stories with the Clone Wars. Contra- George George Dick Lucas Dick said all that it. all that stuff's thrown out. I mean, you had you had all kinds of stuff that was happening in the comic books uh, that they just changed. You know, like yeah. Asajj Ventress's mm-hmm. origins or something. And you know, here but here's the thing is in some cases, not all, mm-hmm. the Clone Wars cartoon show took some of those pieces from okay. the comics that were already there right. and then made them better. For example, Asajj Ventress, making her a night sister of Dothamer rather than a, um, what, a Ratataki. A rat- it was some alien yeah. race that had not been mm-hmm. in, the, in the movies before, had anything to do with the right. Sith or anything like that. They tied her into the Sith a little bit more. Mm-hmm. That was interesting. Um, I was kind of disappointed. I wasted a bunch of money on the comics that right. portrayed her as a rat attacky. Right. But you know, as as one of our other good friends uh, always says, it's all fiction anyway. Right. And so see, I think what you went through recently is what I went through, probably back in the eighties and nineties mm-hmm. with Star Trek. Um, all the Star Trek has a lot of novels, probably more novels if not as many as as Star Wars. I think so, maybe not as popular. But, right, a lot but. of comic books and as a as a teenager and a young man um, between the Star Trek films they would continue with the story and they would all get erased because the next right. Star Trek film would take place days after the previous one and so that initial that was kind of a shock and initially it was strange but um, I was prepared for, for the changes this time. Mm. So mm. yeah they, they say there's Trek fiction and there is um, real Trek. And so there's Star Wars real and, and Star Wars fiction. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, here's what I'll say is what they should do is they should just cherry pick. Okay. They should cherry pick what's good 
and leave out what's bad. Right. Um, and, you know, it's... Uh, I suppose what's good about the expanded universe... Right. I mean, is the idea that the dark side and struggles between the Jedi and the dark side is a cyclical, generational sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if you have uh, Anakin Skywalker falling to the dark side and Luke Skywalker having to redeem his father, it only seems then logical that someone in the next generation is going to have a fall and yeah. have to deal with that. And perhaps Luke or somebody else will stand as the person that has to then mm-hmm. attempt to redeem that person. Now, I totally agree with you. I do not want to see what happened mm-hmm. in the books happen on the big screen. Partly right. because I've just I've already experienced it in mm-hmm. some way before. So I don't right. want to see Jaina and Jason Solo and Anakin Solo, who's dead now, and then okay. Ben Skywalker and have Jason fall to the dark side as Darth Cadus for... The same reason, which is I don't even you're know like what, what you're talking about. <laughs> he he. I know a little bit about uh, Han Solo. Han and Leia. Han Solo marries Princess Leia. They have three children: okay. Jason, Jaina, and Anakin. Mm-hmm. Anakin gets killed off mm-hmm. because, basically, because George Lucas said there's only room for one Anakin mm-hmm. in my Star Wars universe. That's okay. that's Hayden Christensen. Um, <laughs> and so Jaina and Jason live. Jason falls to the dark side. Um, only to then have sort of Jaina become the sort of savior of the galaxy by killing her own brother. See, and so, it's, it's complete. It's it's beginning, middle, and end. It's tied up. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they need to even continue after that. Mm, you know, it's right. its own storyline. It seems so, perfectly so, fine. So don't even pick up from where that is left no, off, because no. chronologically, technically, they probably could. The well, characters they, are the right age. The audience would be so lost. The, the oh, majority man. of the people, including the children, yeah, perhaps the main audience of Star Wars, is going to be so lost if they do that. But they're picking up 30 years later as it mm-hmm. is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, the characters are all old. There's uh, Han, the originals, Han, Han Solo, Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker. Those actors are confirmed now. Mark Hamill, okay. Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford are all going to be reprising their roles, mm-hmm. which I think is kind of cool. I want to yeah, see where they end up. I kind of want to see uh, Mark Hamill you know, get back into shape and <laughs> wield the lightsaber. I know people don't want yeah. the old people doing too much stuff, uh, which I kind of agree. But Supporting I, roles I, I is wanna good. St- I want to see a little... Uh, you know, Luke in an Obi Wan kind of role, and you yeah. know, wield a little lightsaber action. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, but I think they need to change the configuration of the children, mm. just as something to make to make it identifiably different. Right. Um, and one thing that's been talked about is having a female protagonist, mm-hmm. which I think yeah. they're gonna do just for the sheer novelty of it. Right. Although I'm not sure that that's the best reason to do it. I mean, I think. I think Star Wars should address the the dearth of strong female characters, at mm-hmm. least in its own universe, if not in other sci-fi action things. Right. But Star Wars has always been kind of about fathers and sons. Okay. And my question is, what happens to that sort of dynamic when you make the f- the young female the protagonist right. I think I think it has interesting possibilities mm-hmm. but how do you t- <coughs> how do you tie it in and I think that's one thing that they should do is like you know we're talking about how they should sort of ignore the the uh, expanded universe I don't think they should ignore the prequels in some way I mean oh, oh the prequel movies what I well here oh, I mean of course not. I no. think well no. I think a lot of them think though that a lot of people think oh, those movies sucked don't mention them don't have any actors from those movies in okay. the new ones. I, you no, know, we should deal with them like they're the bastard children, right? Well, here's the thing: you can't you can't ignore it. Like sometimes the Friday the Thirteenth movies will, or Halloween those those movies with not that much mm-hmm. continuity. They'll they'll neither confirm nor deny mm-hmm. a certain installment. No, no, it's episode one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right. nine. You you have to, but but include it. But it works only if whatever happens in episode one has resonance then I think in like episode nine so what I'm saying is like there's a lot of elements that were good from the prequels you know execution questionable um but that 
could come up in the new series. For example, the prophecy of bringing balance to the Force. I mean, that's gonna have to be dealt with. What exactly was balance? Well, George Luke. George Lucas if it's says half good and half evil. Right. Is that is that really what you want? Well, I mean, the problem is is that because he was working backwards, he was sort of painting himself into a box, and he was sort of saying that the, uh, you know, the balance of the Force is the Sith being destroyed. Um, yeah, I know a lot of fans. Of, a lot of fans are like, the no, wording no. isn't it, right. right. With well, the, I mean, Luke. I've, I've I've seen Lucas explain it though. He says, the Force is harmony, okay. and the dark side of the Force, particularly the Sith, is like a stain on the Force, like disharmony. So, in order to achieve balance, you have to achieve harmony again. Okay. And that means destroying the Sith. It's not like you must have evil in to uh, to have good. It's not that kind of thing. Like there always must be Sith. There always must be Jedi. And I know a lot of people say that. Like it's like, oh, he killed, you know, Darth Vader killed the last Sith, so now he's a Sith and his son's a Jedi, and now it's a balance. No, it's getting rid of the Sith. Lucas okay. has said that. Mm-hmm. But right. a prophecy misread may have been. Yes. <laughs> so, I think, you know, I mean, and, and what are you going to do if you don't have Sith in the well, movie? You know, my idea was, we're, we're, we're jumping ahead a little bit here, was that they've kind of done these, I think they've done this several times mm-hmm. in the expanded universe, is they they encounter villains from another galaxy. No, but, no. But, no, no, no. <laughs> Look, <laughs> hear me out. Is that maybe if you have the good side of the force versus the dark side of the force maybe there's their dark side users from another galaxy but they're not sith lords they 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 don't maybe they don't realize it's the dark side so it's still the force versus the force but they could have something other than established sith or established jedi i don't know that's just throwing it out there my problem with that is the, the expanded universe has already had maybe about four instances yeah. of aliens from another galaxy the, coming yeah. in. And we've even, had, even in Marvel Comics, right? Did it. Well, we had yeah. Who are those guys with the pale skin and the, the dark the, hair? The Nagai. The Nagai, and then the the Sea Rook in the Truce of Bakura, the Yuvitha in the Black Fleet Crisis, Yuzhan and Vong. the Yuzhan Vong, and the huge right. uh, you know twenty five book series mm-hmm. that Del Rey did. Um, I don't need to see that. Okay. And I, I mean, the, the, but the trick is, what do you do? Because if, you know, it's like, yay, Jedi versus Sith. It's like, wow, we were going to see that for like six movies. We saw it, we saw it for six movies. Already. We need mm-hmm. to see it again for three more. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you have this sort of like wealth of background material too, from everything from Knights of the Old Republic to... Uh, the comics that have now taken place hundreds of years in the future or like 100 years in the future with right. um, I forget what it's called but it features Cade Skywalker who's like See, Luke, I, I, I had tuned out of it at that point right yeah. well I mean the thing about it is is uh, what I think you want to see is something way from the past reemerge mm. or something something that had to do with Palpatine and the lineage of the Sith resurface but kind of in a new way or something so that maybe it's right. something slightly different mm-hmm. um, but connecting to that prophecy stuff because uh, I think it's important to have these movies link up to the other ones in such a way yeah, that when you see them attached you go oh we didn't just tack these on mm. these actually feel of a piece mm-hmm. and that was what was really clever about the prequels is that um, you know, we saw how the prequels led into the sort of original trilogy. And For the, the most part. Yeah. You know, and, well, and that there was this, these layers of heroic cycle. Now, I, I think Lucas got a little um, self-indulgent talking mm-hmm. about, you know, it's like music. It's like <laughs> playing motifs over each other right, and they'll right. be recognizable. And it's sort of like, you can't, well, you can't just keep repeating the same lines over and over again, George. This is where the fun begins. Like, you know, oh, it's like, right. oh, my God. <laughs> you know, you got to come up with some new stuff in mm-hmm. order to keep people interested. Well, they will come up with new stuff now because they, apparently they're going off of Lucas's notes, but we have a f- 
new writers, mm-hmm. new director. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, a Lucas new, will have a new studio. He, you know, I don't know if he's being modest, but he says he will have very little involvement from this point. You know, probably. Mm-hmm. You know, J.J. Abrams is a pretty creative guy. Mm-hmm. He has not. Um, although I will say that most of his movies have been uh, derivative of classic movies rather than classic movies in their own right. Oh, okay. Um, but hey, he's making derivative, fantastic derivative, solid derivative movies. So mm-hmm. you know that's about that's about as much as you can hope for. Right. Um, God, I hope I didn't kill my chances of getting cast by saying. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. But uh, you you want to be. You'd you'd play a stormtrooper. You'd play. Are you kidding? I'd, I'd someone in the background. I'd play salacious B crumbs, uh, like stool, yeah, in the go. movie. Right. If, if I if if I had the opportunity mm-hmm. to do that, um, but um, so I, you know I think I would like to see Luke's children, as well as I'll argue with you on that. Just you want to see moment. you want to see Luke be Obi Wan. Totally celibate, not have any kids. I think for the sake of continuity from the prequels, um, you can't have him married. Maybe not. Maybe not. That's not a. It's not a good idea. Uh, uh, when the prequels came about, they contradicted a lot of the expanded universe stuff because Jedi and the books and comics did have families mm. and children and long lineages, and so forth. And then that was apparently erased in the in the prequels. But for the sake of continuity. I'm I'm okay with Luke being this, you know, single old sage like Obi-Wan mm-hmm. um, who never settled down. But then what about Leia? Leia's supposed to maybe be a Jedi as well. I think Han and Leia must have kids. Though. Right. So Han and Leia have kids. Mm-hmm. Luke might be... Uh, old Uncle Luke. Old Uncle Luke. That they go to to get trained. But mm-hmm. I definitely think that it's probably... One of his like greatest students, who okay. who has the star pupil, right? Who falls to the dark side or something? Although that's been done in the expanded universe as well, uh, between Kip Duron mm-hmm. and Kueller and even Jason Solo, if you consider him the student of Luke Skywalker, you know they all fell to the dark side. Right. So it's been done, um, but it would seem like that's the logical place for something. For mm-hmm. conflict to start, at least. If Starting that's the, point. Right. Yeah. So let's move on to some sort of like, let, let me ask you then, casting-wise, mm-hmm. um, we know that the big three are returning, Han, Luke, Leia. Right. No official word on uh, Lando. Billy, Billy La- D. Lando or Peter Mayhew. Billy D or, or even the droids. I think certainly Billy D. I would love to see him as may, as the chancellor of the galaxy. I think that's Billy <laughs> Lando Calrissian. Yeah, he was the administrator, and I'm the administrator of, of this Cloud facility. City. And then Welcome. he got made a general, and, right? And then it'd be kind of neat. I mean, he, he's someone you can trust. Right? You just want to see a black president in space now. Is yeah, the yeah, huh? oh, okay? I'm all for that. All right. All right. I no, mean, I think D. Leia being having served in that position makes sense, and that's what happened in the right. books. So maybe not having that. I don't know, Mon Mothma. <laughs> yeah, Mon, but no one knows who Mon Mothma is outside of us hardcore fans. Do you know who Mon Mothma is? Many Bothans died to bring us this vlog, Don. There you go. All right. Anyway, so okay. D, Anthony Daniels. So you would bring them all back? Um, just about uh, Anthony Daniels. I think. Certainly, at least providing the voice of C-3PO. Mm-hmm. Warwick Davis is Wicket the Ewok. Oh, shut up. <laughs> now you've, gone, you've gone too far. Well, I think, I think R2, having an R2 and a Jedi are sort of iconic, you know. and, and Alone on a right. mission, on a hostile right. planet. Right, so, so that happens. Sure. Um, now, how about, more questionably, do any of the prequel characters return as mm, holograms or ghosts. Right. Do, uh, prequel characters? Well, for example, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ewan McGregor, mm-hmm. in a sort of holocron, is what they call it, a hologram-esque giving advice. Right. Do we do we see Natalie Portman, Luke, and Leia find out that their mother is Natalie Portman? Do we ever see that? I think um, they address that they're... They were from Naboo, and that they're some arguably royalty, just to throw away lines. So maybe like, or a portrait in the background maybe. of their mother, or something that like might that. Might be kind of neat. And maybe in her dominatrix outfit from the mm-hmm. second movie. Right. Um, okay. All right. 
And uh, how about how about here's one, Ian McDermott, mm-hmm. Palpatine. You think he or appears? The emperor. the emperor. Does he appear? Darth Sidious. Mm-hmm. Darth Sidious. Right. Does he appear as a some sort? Not as a ghost, because I think that's a deal. The d- dark side people do not appear as ghosts. They, okay. Yeah. I well, guess. that's that's. I think they did in the EU. In the tales, I know, but I think I think that's Lu- one that I, I think what Lucas was going for is yeah, that yeah. the 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 path to immortality was self sacrifice and giving giving up your physical flesh in order to maintain the spirit. Whereas yeah. the Sith did the opposite. You know, the Emperor's all decrepit and old, and the idea is yeah. that he was supporting with his power his flesh to keep it as alive as long as possible. Okay. You know, even though it was decrepit and mm-hmm. and you know withered. From the inside out, and the same thing I with guess, Darth. Yeah. Same thing with Darth Vader, keeping the sort of mechanical stuff, mm-hmm. keeping his body alive at all right. costs. Right. Um, so the fear of death but, uh, being part of the dark side. You know but, what I mean? But, but were you, where are you going with Palpatine? Is that he appears as like a hologram, like a Sith holocron, giving evil? No. Mind. <laughs> You're like no, I, no. I, I, okay, before I before I no. tuned out of the expanded universe in the early nineties, uh-huh. that was one of the things that turned me off to it. Mm. Was bringing back the Emperor. Oh yeah, Dark Empire in the Dark no. Empire comic. You need to have a different. Well, they also brought villain. back Boba Fett. Right. And and nobody's dead. Nobody dies. Yeah, I hate None, there was no consequences. That works in Star Trek sometimes, but not Star. Wars. No, it 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 was a real turn off, and I was like, "Who the hell are going to bring back next? Jabba the Hutt, right? Greedo." They brought back Jabba's relatives. It would be like another Hut. It was like right. it was like I'm his fat uncle. <laughs> yeah, I, I no, I I love Ian McDiarmid's performances uh, in those movies and the Emperor, and he's let's leave him dead. Okay, do you bring back Darth Maul? Dark, which Dark, which they oh, did in the Clone Wars they because brought back Darth Maul. yeah the Clone Wars cartoon was abruptly canceled and Darth Maul had been resurrected and now he's alive, uh, and and they never tied up that. That's an interesting idea. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I thought Ray Park's martial arts moves were awesome. The the design, the makeup, and so forth mm-hmm. is, is is superb. But I think. It's it's not necessarily the same audience. The Clone Wars cartoon, a little more juvenile for mm-hmm. children, mm-hmm. and the Star Wars movies mm-hmm. for all ages, um, that you might throw people for a loop if you bring back Darth Maul into this other media. I would live with it. Mm-hmm. I would live with it. I thought it was a bad idea when they did it with the Clone Wars because just for exactly what you're saying about bringing back the Emperor, and it's like mm-hmm. it's like no, someone dies, leave them dead. There's consequences. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't just. It's not a soap and opera. It, and where, it cheapens their death, obviously, it, absolutely from the previous installment. But they already did it. They did it in the Clone Wars, and the Clone Wars is basically canon now. Um, mm-hmm. At least Lucas has kind of made it that way. Okay. Um, so I would live with it if they did it, and I mean he's visually cool. They shouldn't. Have pro- they probably shouldn't have killed him off in right. the first one because he was such. He was probably one of the best things about it, just from a visual mm-hmm. standpoint right. and an action standpoint. So I would live with it, and it would bring a connection in there to the prequels, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, although I could do without it as well. So, you know, I, I mean, it kind of depends if we ever get to see a tie up with the Clone Wars cartoon if we're ever going to res- get a mm-hmm. sort of like direct, direct okay. to DVD yeah exactly finishing up of those arcs or yeah. whatever okay so mm, I gotcha okay. you know, so you don't want to see Tamura Morrison as Boba Fett or three, Jango three, Fett 3, or 3.0 the, or the <laughs> clones right and okay no, well, no well, anyone who's died so I think what stay dead. We're in def- the films I we're definitely going to see um, some kids of Han and Leia, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, according to the breakdowns that have appeared online, mm-hmm. although these can't be corroborated, right. there are at least three roles um, that we know of that are sort of uh, a man in his early 30s, late 20s, 30s. early 30s, very good looking. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, a, and a woman of the same age. Okay. And then a younger male. Now, uh, if you read the EU, that would seem like 
Jaina and Jason Solo and Ben Skywalker okay. as the as the characters. The right. younger male being the twenty one. But recently, you know, regardless of who the characters are, they've talked about some casting for that. They've talked about Ryan Gosling. Well, that's just from this week. From this week, okay. Ryan Gosling in the role possibly of that late twenties, early thirties male. Okay. And Zac Efron, Zac Efron in the role of of Zac Efron. You don't even need to change his name. It's it's it's, it's very Star it's Wars. It's almost name. a Star Wars name in itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for some reason, I'm not. I'm I'm having a bad feeling about this. <laughs> uh, Quoting lines again. Oh over well. And over and over. Well, what can I say other than that would be terrible um, for both of these choices. See? Gosling not as much as uh, I mean he's built up enough cred and you know what and maybe not even for Zac Efron maybe I'm being unfair but um, you know and I, I know who's casting it so I'm, I'm hesitant to <coughs> shout out the names of oh, okay. the casting directors but um, but you don't like that a lot of, it got a lot of negative no. feedback already online. And I, they were probably listening. But it sounds like it sounds like Disney going, you know. I mean, the rumors could be totally unsubstantiated. Right. Ryan Gosling's agent has come out and said that that's uh, a complete myth, although we've, right. you know, what, it did come from Latino Review, which has been yeah. pretty solid on rumors before. Oh, yeah, they, they apparently broke the whole uh, con reveal as the villain like a year before Star Trek into Darkness like, came like out. they needed to break that as a, well, a year huh, before who, who are they doing for Star Trek 2 yeah. who's the most recognizable villain from Star Trek franchise right. the, that, that's, that's my problem with this stuff though is mm-hmm. that's how these executives think is they go we, we you know and I understand they're the money so if you're the money behind one of these big tentpole productions <coughs> um you know, you want to ensure that you're going to make your investment yeah. back, and one of the ways to do that is to get recognizable names mm-hmm. who attract audience right. to see the show. You, you, yeah, you know, like you're going to spend. Efron. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> well, yeah. Zach, well, and Ryan, or somebody. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But here's the thing that, you know, I have a very, very strong feeling about this. Mm-hmm. Um, Not a and, bad feeling about this. It, it's <laughs> it's a strong feeling. Oh, okay. Uh, and. The thing about it is, is that content will drive audiences into the seats. And at this point, Star Wars, <laughs> Star Wars is we'll such drive a, us into the seat. Star Wars is such a recognizable name. You don't need to have any other name attached. Mm, when true. they made the original Star Wars movies, all the studio executives were scared, mm-hmm. s-less because. Lucas cast three unknowns as his leads. Right. Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, and Carrie Fisher. Mm-hmm. Nobody knew who those people were. But he got Alec Guinness. And he got... Peter Cushing. Peter Cushing. Uh, as the sort of British stalwart, <laughs> uh, tried and tested actors mm-hmm. to be... Authority figures. To be in his ensemble. Mm-hmm. He knew that you didn't... He And he wanted unrecognizable people because he... He, and he's always tried to go for that. He didn't want people who were known for other things mm-hmm. because he was creating iconic characters. Okay. And or he just couldn't afford anybody. Well, else. <laughs> but I feel that, and I feel strongly that they could do the exact same thing for this. You yeah. don't need you don't need to have any. You don't need to have Will Smith. Well, maybe not Will Smith. Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith. After After Earth, I'm not sure. <laughs> you don't you don't need Brad Pitt in these movies to sell Star Wars. Star Wars sells itself already. And one of the other names that has been talked about was John Noble, who is in the Lord of the Rings franchise as Denethor, the evil king. I, I, I mean, gee, I wonder what role he's going to play in this movie. Not that that's like bad. Evil king? And, right, prop. You know, he's, okay. he's probably going to be somewhere... Well, you see, I didn't know who that was. So ideas like that, people who maybe have... Mm-hmm. Have have a have a nice body of work under their belt, but are not big stars. Right. Like, I like okay. that. Like you and McGregor and Natalie Portman, at the time ninety seven when they were announced, right. were not big stars, but did have an impressive body of work. Right. Um, well, I mean, but it, it just smacks of the, these and the re, this inter, this review, Latino review uh, rumor broke. Um, 
saying that Leonardo DiCaprio had turned down mm-hmm. an opportunity to do the series. And, you know, he was rumored to be Anakin Skywalker, too, at the time, oh, and, epi- yeah. and when Episode 2 was coming out. But he turned it down, this, these sequel movies, to do Robotech. Right. Um, Nothing against Robotech. Yeah, um, I, I think that's fine. I think Leo is just what you were talking about. But, Leo's too big a what, name but that's for, what for it, this. That's what it smacks and I, up. And, like, and I like who, Robotech. I think who can we cool. get for these movies? And it's like they can't think of anybody in the 19 to 23-year-old range who's like popular. And they've worked, obviously they've worked with Zac Efron before in the High School Musical mm, series. Exactly. Like, let's get Zac Efron. You don't need to do that, Disney. Get a bunch of unknowns that you screen test who work well together as an ensemble, who uh, fit the roles. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my (coughs) personal preference is that they are American because I'm just sick of seeing another (laughs) Australian or Or British British person in it. And obviously they're going to be shooting in England. So, I mean, I guarantee you they're going to cast some British person in one of these as Han Solo's son. Hello, Dad. I'm Han Solo's son. If it's Tom Hardy, I I think that would be cool. (laughs) Okay. Well, I mean, the thing is, is like, Whoever's right for the role, mm-hmm. you can cast at them. But, right. you know, that's ultimately the correct decision. But it doesn't have to be a name. You already have Harrison Ford in your movie, who's a bankable star, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, in a Star Wars movie. And, he, right. and you know, uh, to get those three back is a coup in and of right. itself, especially when Harrison Ford was like, Star Wars, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Han Solo's kind of a thin character for me to play. <laughs> Guess the money was pretty good, though, huh, Harry? Um, oh, you never know. Yeah, well, but so I, I don't think you need to get anybody recognizable. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I'll just sum it up that I, I agree that at least two or three of these leads, the actual lead leads, not supporting cast, should be relative unknowns. Mm-hmm. Right, and the whole British American thing, I don't. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not an actor, so it doesn't bother me <laughs> that Brits are taking all the parts these days. Yeah, just let them take. Uh, yeah, well, mm-hmm. yeah, well, I mean, part part of the reason that they are, and Australians are, is because they actually are pretty famous in their own countries oh, yeah. first. Mm-hmm. It's just that they're not known to perhaps a wider American mainstream right. audience. So you're able to get those people, and they're kind of already accredited stars with the acting <coughs> ability and star power <clears throat> mm-hmm. and you can put them into stuff and people won't immediately recognize them and go like oh that's Joseph Gordon-Levitt mm-hmm. in you know playing Han Solo's son or right. what you know what I mean mm-hmm. uh, so but but I mean that's that's my argument too for having unknowns as it were mm-hmm. is that you can actually go into a movie and actually just slip into the story yeah. with with far more ease. Like, who who had really known Chris uh, Hemsworth before Thor, right? Little part in Star Trek, right. tiny little part. Uh, well, I he knew is him. Thor. People love him now because yeah. of that. And, and even, even uh, Chris Evans did Fantastic Four, but mm-hmm. kind of, you know, not, not, a, not a lot else. Mm-hmm. And now he's Captain America. So. Yeah. I mean, all those actors have been uh, been in acclaimed works before. They were in these big sort of tentpole franchises. But, you know, you'll get somebody who has been around, has been in a bunch of things, mm. has not had, like, a thing that makes them immediately recognizable. Right. And they'll become a star. I mean, Harrison Ford had done a couple of smaller roles and things when he was offered the part of Han Solo, mm. and he became a bona fide, bankable movie right. star right. he was nobody when he was cast as Han Solo remember his turn as the famous Bob Falfa in <laughs> American Graffiti and more American Graffiti right yeah. right yeah. no nobody knew you, you don't need you don't need those names hmm. so um, other than that you know we already have sort of a dream team a little bit as you know in nerddom with J.J. Uh, Abrams Michael Arndt who wrote little no is that right? You write Love in the Sunshine? Oh, that's what he did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, right. John Williams is confirmed coming back. Okay. It's been confirmed now. For So yeah. things seem to be in place mm-hmm. as long as they listen to us about the plots and the <laughs> casting. Like you did for Man of Steel 2. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we could go, we could talk more specifics on plot, but I think we've, we've hit it at 40 minutes on our video today. 
<laughs> we'll have to divide this uh, into two halves again. Yeah. Or we could just record it again and just say everything we just said, but in, oh, okay. in ten minutes. Uh, nah, I'd rather record it an, another episode in our next time. <laughs> All right. Well, we're, we already are editing this part out. So. Okay. All right. Thank you again. Um, and uh, we'll see you back for another uh, installment of Where, in Where the Hell, hell do, do We Go, go from, from Here? Keep watching. Thank you. <laughs>